with, with experience, a lot of us are getting away with it. And as people, as the sense of humor of Nigerians begin to grow, then they were, for, a, a long while back, if you do a joke about the Yoruba people, they're like, oh, why are you having Yoruba? And then so we started doing jokes about Yoruba Hausa Ibo. And then gradually we expanded it to Yoruba Hausa Ibo Wari. And then a little we threw in uh, the Calabar. Okay, so now some people are doing jokes about uh, Oli. Like, like, so it, it, it just depends on how the appreciation level has grown, really. So people are now, it, because of uh, social media, people are now more, they're, they're, they're growing their sense of humor daily. As the jokes and humor is being thrown at them, they're imbibing it and getting better. So that's why we, we, we're on a roll right now. We're on a roll indeed. So, Mr. Paul Williams. Well, thank you. For me, uh, the Comenia is the most dangerous species as an entertainer. Uh, dangerous in the sense that you get on stage and you don't kill, you're dead. What I mean dead is you know your career dies dead. It's like, it's unlike the musician. I mean, if you don't sing well, you can come to work with a hit. But a Comenia will just go on that stage and, and die. And what I mean die, die physically. Okay. That is how dangerous it is. Then also, the comedian is a very dangerous person in the sense that if he picks on you, he picks on you and makes you either happy or make you sad. And comedy is not something, I, I mean, Oliver said something about having comedy curriculum in universities, and I wonder how that's gonna be. Because uh, as a comedian, has to first of all be inborn, yeah. then you trim it. It's like, comedy is like diamond. You know, when you bring it out, it's raw. So you just have to, you know, heat it up, clean it up. It's not something you learn. You must have it, then you, tra you, then you, you trim it, you train it. It's like music as well, but it's stronger than music. And comedy also, and why it's thriving, I might say, because whether good or bad, you need a comedian. When you're doing a celebration, you need a comedian to lighten it up. When you are mourning, you need a comedian to that, you know, to ease it, you know, make it. So, but to me, comedy also is very, very uh, dangerous thing to do. That's why most times, most comedy films come to you flat because they are not written by people, comedians. Now, comedians come in different forms. Sorry, could you repeat that uh, last part again? So most comedy films... Sorry, uh, yeah. I see the I play. I can't, I can't repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying comedy, I mean, for you to write, for you to be a comedian, we come in different uh, forms. You have the comedians, a stand-up comedian. You have the comedian as an actor. Yeah. I can give an example. I mean, I remember starting Gary into Actor now, he's not a very good actor. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> but, but he. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, try, 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 try. But what I mean is, you have comedians who are stand up comedians, you have comedians who. Uh, Oswafia, what's his name? Uh, Kemo. Put him on as a stand up. He can't. And you have comedians who are very good with the pen. Let them come on. State they can't. So you have com com uh, comedians come in different uh, genres. A cartoonist, a cartoonist cannot be a stand-up comedian, but he's a comedian. So comedy is the only thing, I think, the only uh, entertainment genre that has different forms, from writing, from uh, stand-up, from acting it, you know, and for us, you know, put it together. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, you sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, from a, from a technology point of view, I, I, I can talk about Huawei and how you know, we are the guys in the background. Um, for over a decade, we have been working silently, um, helping to grow the Nigerian mobile um, industry from hundreds of thousands to over about 150 million users. And everyone will agree that the mobile industry has changed Nigeria for the, for the better. Same thing um, looking at the entertainment industry. As a Nigerian personally, for many years, 
it was difficult to go out and hold your head high because we had 419, we had corruption being played out in the foreign media. But today, you are very proud being in Nigeria because um, the entertainment industry has transformed the image of Nigeria. Starting obviously with music, going into Nollywood, and now comedy. It's very interesting when you go to a, a pub in Nairobi, they are playing Tubaba, they are playing KC, they are playing P Square. Um, if you go to the Caribbean, you'll be shocked how um, glued to Nollywood they are. And coming back home, how stand up comedy and skits are the rave now. So, from our perspective, we're saying, you know what? How do we help the industry? Um, how do we help players in the industry be happy? There's nothing worse than working hard and not being able to smile to the bank. And that is where we come in, basically providing a distribution outlet for the millions of Nigerians to access um, your content, to access your product. But more importantly, providing an avenue for people like Wally. Eh? I can't talk about my bro Ali Baba because we know he's, uh, he has it all. But for people upcoming to actually make money. And I think that's the most important thing for us. Um, we've done it with music. For over three years, we, we in conjunction, of course, with our incredible partners, MTN, have built Music Plus to become a huge platform. We've got over 200,000 um, songs in there. We've paid out, and to be frank, most people don't know, we've paid out about 5 billion naira to artists in the Nigerian ecosystem. So I, I think that's something huge. Again, I'll say we're the silent partner, but we are here for people. And uh, we have launched Comedy Plus. So what we've done with music, we want to do it for comedy. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I think before we jump to Oli here, we would like to go ahead and uh, remember, of course, what the conversation is, is it is time for Africa. It is time for Africa. And this brings me to the next question. Uh, now, as far as comedy in Nigeria is concerned, we we know, of course, in Nigeria, we really appreciate our comedians and they get paid very much. We, we know exactly that is pretty true. And because of this as well, it gets you to think, is our com comedy, is it exportable? How exportable is the comedy? And then also, in asking that question as well, we know maybe across Africa, let's even start with Africa, you know, before we move elsewhere. In Africa now, other African countries, and this is for you, Willie, do they, do, they, do they embrace your comedy as much as we do here in Nigeria? Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such an honor being here this wonderful afternoon. I, I count it as a huge honor. It's not that, uh, like Apostle Paul would say, please permit me. He said, I'm what I am by the grace of God, so I count this as a huge honor. Like the, uh, let's start from the base of comedy in itself. I think uh, anything that is universal is exportable. Anything that is universal is exportable, and comedy is one of it. Music is exportable. Now, the, the major thing now is the language of comedy you're using. I don't think there's anything anyone does in the world that doesn't have people that will feed on it. You have your own niche, you have your own client, you have people that will listen to it. That is why there is a brand of music that is called Fuji music or Juju music that our father had then, and they could play that kind of song. They call them over in London, in America, to come and do that kind of music. And you see the white people dance to that same thing. So I, I think for also for comedy, just like uh, Ali Baba said, that comedy is like a universal language. And beyond the fact that uh, comedy is what people just watch, I, I have the thing, uh, a privilege to say comedy is, all, is also medicinal. We are solution providers, we are not jesters, which is very important. Uh, I see the way they treat comedians at times and they think we are just, we are not fools. What we are doing is what, uh, yes, these are notions that need to be heavily corrected. We are not, I just see, I meet people on the road and someone say, crack joke for me. And it's so annoying, sir. Can you meet a banker and say, begin to count money for me? So, so there is more, there is a lot of prestige to this. If you know what it means, uh, uh, the, the scientists will say that there is more to use when you smile than when you frown. We, we as comedians, we are your doctors. We make you live long. 
we, we had value to your life. There are so many people that should have died of depression, but when we go through the phone and they see some of you, more, they, you have the comedy instincts productivity. I've had a lot of testimony of people watch comedy clips. Maybe they want to do something creative. They watch it. They go back to what they have to do, and they have things to do about it. So the, the language of comedy, I think, is a language that is becoming universal right now. Is a language of the youth. It's something that we can tap into it more. And from the angle that my own, angle, my own perception is the fact that I, I do more of the online. And it's very big. It's huge. It, uh, for, for me, most of my jokes, I have jokes in English, but I have jokes in, in Yoruba language. And I've, one thing that I really, really love and amuses me is the fact that I've seen white people enter into my DM and they tell me there are Nigerians laughing in America. There are Nigerians laughing in London. And I want to know the treasure in that language you're speaking. Just the way an Olamide would do a song in Yoruba, Fino would do in Hebrew. There is something about our culture that is a heritage, which we can, for me, I'm not just a comedian, I'm an ambassador of my culture. So that if I go to America to do a joke or to perform, and they ask me, where are you coming from? I will be able to, I will be able to say something about my roots, which is adding value again to the country. So I think it's of high exportable value. And I, 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 like, like I said the other time, I'm not just one guy that walks down the street. I'm not just one fool that cracks you up. I have value to the society. I'm a responsible young man. I think, yes, I'm responsible. <laughs> Ali Baba, I am, yes. Okay, uh, okay well. I'm surprised he's even speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the best investor in the world. It's a great effect, sir. Permit me to say it on this platform. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, great Ife, sir. Okay, no. The only school that has celebrated 50 years, 40 years of strike, 10 years of No, Ife, 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 Ife is great. If you see any car that has a sticker on it that says Akokite, it's a Unilag people. If you, Ali, but don't let wait, no, wait, wait. If you see a car that has Akokite, it's Unilag. If you see a car that is broken down, no tire is a great Ife. <laughs> okay, so, okay. that bombshell, I'd like to ask, of course, you mentioned something, you mentioned two things. First yeah. of all, you said uh, we are not fools. At all, we are not. And you also mentioned how you add value. Sure. So let's, 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 bring it, let's, let's, let's bring it to what normally is a problem with Africa, of course. The fact that there are so many challenges and we feel, of course, politically, there's, so, there's a lot wrong. Now, um, I was listening to Alibaba earlier saying something about how he told Abacha to take off his glasses. Now, the truth is, I'm very sure not, none of his accolades or even his wife could tell him to do that. But Alibaba was able to do that. So, this brings me to this question. Do you feel you are doing enough to pass a message? I think this is also for, for you as well. I'd like to start with you. Do you feel you're doing enough to pass a message? If you're able to tell uh, a di dictator like Abacha to take off his glasses, it's pretty obvious that comedy could actually do so much could actually affect major change. So as far as that is concerned, do you feel you're doing enough? And if you feel uh, you are, could you explain exactly how? And at the same time, if you feel you're not, maybe explain exactly what ways you can pass a message across about AIDS, about, you know, about everything else, about corruption, and so on. Well, the, the, the thing is that uh, from time in Moriva, the the, the, the act of making people laugh has always been a part of, uh, of human beings. It is that you always had, in the book of uh, the, the Bible, for instance, there's, there's something called Isaac. The meaning of Isaac is laughter. So laughter has always been in the Bible as well, and it's always been all through history. So you find that even in, in uh, palaces, you have court jesters, you have the jesters that the, the the king had on his side. He listens to everything that everybody comes to say when he sits with the with the king. Because the, the way it is is, as a comedian, you tell a joke and people are laughing. And while they are laughing and their mouths are open, you stick the truth in. That is what comedians do. Comedians are people who take very light issues, make jokes out of it, and put it out there for people to listen to. We play a role. Um, a lot of people may not see it, but when you tell subtitles, okay, and it's, it's important that people appreciate it. That's why during the uh, Occupy Nigeria protest, and I was banned from the villa, it was because I was part of the Occupy Nigeria protest. And when Mr. President was asked on a media chat, he said the opposition gathered 
comedians and musicians together to influence the populace. You see, on that occupied Nigeria, there were doctors, there were engineers, there were lawyers, there were sons, there were, there were all people of all kinds of profession. But the only ones that the president mentioned of, capip, of the capability to influence opinion were comedians and artists. Because it meant that we were doing something. And which also explains why when it's election time, you find a lot of politicians try to use that influence that artists like us have to better their elections. And so it is, it is true that we, we know the strength that we have. We know the role that we play in the society. But like social commentators, we cannot uh, run away from that. And we, we try as much as possible to play within that uh, ambience. Right, very well said. So um, let me, I, I'm not sure if I should ask you the same exact question or if I should, well, yeah, if you have uh, something quick to say about that. Comedians are more of uh, influencers, opinion leaders, and uh, with messages. If you look at uh, the old Roman Empire, they use comedians. When the emperor wants to relax or is so tense, they bring a comedian. And in me there, you'll find that people inject the comedian with one or two messages. You know, and so when he cracks his joke and the emperor is laughing, he drops a message. There's a particular, I can't remember now, so I'm getting old, so I can There's an emperor was about to kill his brother. And he was so angry that the wife said, bring in the, the, uh, the, the jester. But before the jester went in, they gave him a message about the brother. So, during his jesting and all that, he dropped the message. And that stopped the emperor from killing his brother. So that tells you the importance of uh, comedians in influencing decisions and uh, attitudes. Also, in the Benin Empire, you have justice. But justice are not just there to make the Oba laugh. They come with messages. And also in real life, really, uh, if you want to drive a message, you drive it very hard. Nobody's going to take it. But you come, you know, use a, uh, if you use a soft soft tone that is like in comedy, light hearted way, you get the message. It's like kids. These days you don't teach a kid A, B, C, black and white. You come with a lot of fun and they learn the message. So that's what comedians are also doing. Around. Yes, that's how what comedians are also doing in okay. society. All right, so uh, to, to you, Wali, so with the videos, the funny videos that you put up all the time, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would, they appreciate it already with the hardship. Sure. And they get to laugh through sure, all the definitely. suffering and smiling, of course. But then, what, what other messages do you feel you've been able to pass across or been able to influence as far as uh, people's lots, behavior? Lots, not just for me. I think for a couple of us are uh, more into the internet thing. Well, for, for myself and my very good friend, we, we make sure that there will always be times that issues will always come up. And like what uh, Alibaba said, comedy is something that I'm sure you'll have laughed and you look at the message behind. It's, it's like an arrow and it has something sweet at it. You laugh. There, there, there'll be the laughter there. We, we see ourselves as messengers. That's why, uh, and the major issue is, it's just based on how the comedian sees himself. It's called personal perception. Uh, uh, do you just see yourself as someone that they'll call on the weekend to come and anchor a wedding or a birthday? or you see yourself as someone that is adding value to the society. That will change your perception about what comedy is to you. So what comedy is to Arole is different from what comedy is to one MC Totoroto. MC Totoroto might mean I can just crack. That's why you see some comedians, they don't even know jokes to crack at events. They don't even know personalities they should not talk to. So it, it depends on how you see comedy. Like the way we see comedy, we see it as a tool to drive on the point, as, some, as a tool to inspire young people to make you understand that, okay, you can do this and also Im impact your society and your environment. Thank you.